The Spider's Thread by Akutagawa Yunosuke. Early in the morning, the Lord Buddha was going for a walk in heaven. He came upon a tranquil pond so clear and calm that one could peer deep into its depth to the worlds below. If you looked into the still pond, you could see deep below. You could see deep beyond the heavenly realms, through the middle worlds where earth dwells and deeper still, into the depths of the lower hell worlds. With compassion, Lord Buddha gazed upon the agonies of those lower worlds, raging fires, cries of torment, and people torn asunder by wild beasts. Then Kandata, a man deep in the depths of hell along with other sinners, comes into the Lord Buddha's sight. This man, Kandata, was a murderer, an arsonist, and a master thief who had committed many robberies. Yet the Buddha recalled that Kandata had performed a single good deed. Once when Kandata was traveling through a thick forest, he came upon a spider crawling along the roadside. Kandata raised his foot and was about to stomp it to death. But he suddenly reconsidered, saying, No, this spider may be small, but it is still a living creature. Somehow it just seems like a shame to kill it for no reason. In the end he spared the spider rather than killing it. While observing the situation in hell, the Lord Buddha remembers that this Kandata had spared the spider. And Buddha decided that in return for having done just that one good deed, he would, if he could, try to rescue this man from hell. Luckily, Buddha sees a spider of heaven spinning a beautiful silver web. The Lord Buddha takes the spider's thread gently into his hand and lowers it into the distant depths of hell. When Kandata first died and went to hell, all he could see was darkness. He looked out into the darkness. All around him, darkness blacker than when you close your eyes. A darkness so deep it feels as if you are falling. Surrounded by void, enveloped in an emptiness without beginning or end. A darkness so terrible, one feels as if you were buried alive in nothingness. Only darkness. Then a distant light, the light coming from the hell of infinite blades, a hell where murderers and violent sinners feel the pain that they inflicted upon others, only such pain they feel for years without end. The feeling of helplessness is beyond description. Moreover, the surroundings are perfectly still, like the inside of a grave. If a sound is to be heard, it is just the faint sigh of some sinner. The sighs are faint because anyone who has fallen to this level of hell is already so exhausted by the tortures of the other hells that they no longer have even enough strength to cry out. The pain of thousands of years of torture has left them too weak to scream. Kandata is unable to do anything but sigh in painful silence and misery. On the day the Lord Buddha views him, Kandata was floating in the river of death, a river of blood where he continues to choke on blood. He does not have the strength to swim forever, so he floats, gasping for breath as he chokes on the blood that surrounds him in that cold river of death. One day, however, his endless procession of hopeless suffering is interrupted. Kandata happens to raise his head and sees in the sky above the hell world a spider's thread, a thin line shimmering in the silent darkness, gently descending toward him from the distant, distant heavens. Upon seeing it, Kandata claps his hands for joy. If he were to hang on to this thread and climb it to its end, he would surely be able to escape from hell. If all went well, he would even be able to enter heaven, he would be free. His body would no longer be cut by blades, nor would he be drowning in the river of blood. His misery giving way to hope, Kandata quickly takes firm hold of the spider's thread with both hands and using all his might, begins climbing up and up, hand over hand. Long ago, Kandata was a former master thief, so this came naturally to him. But because the distance between hell and heaven is so great, he is not able to climb to the top easily. After climbing for a while, even Kandata finally tires. He is unable to continue for even one more pull on the thread. Having no other choice, he intends first to take a short rest. While hanging onto the thread, he looks down. He sees that thanks to the efforts he spent climbing, 
The hell where he had just recently been is now already hidden at the bottom of darkness. He also sees that the faint glow of the terrifying river of fire is below him. If he were to continue at this pace, the escape from hell just might not be as difficult as he had expected. Wrapping his hand around the spider's thread, Kandata laughs in a voice unused during his years in hell. I'm saved! I'm saved at last! Then he suddenly notices that below him on the spider's thread, just like a line of ants, a countless number of sinners are following him, climbing up and up with everything they have. When Kandata sees this, he momentarily freezes from shock and fear, his mouth open and his eyes rolling in his head like a frenzied lunatic. How could it be that this tiny spider's thread, seemingly strained even under the weight of just him alone, is able to support the weight of that many? By some chance, with a thread to break, Kandata and everyone else would fall headlong back into hell. That would be unbearable. But even as he thinks this, sinners, not by the hundreds nor even by the thousands, but in swarms of many hundred thousands, continue to crawl up from the bottom of the pitch-dark hell worlds and climb up the thin spider's thread in single file. If he doesn't do something right away, won't the thread break and won't they all fall back down? At this point, Kandata yells in a loud voice, Hey you sinners, this spider's thread is mine. Who the hell asked you to climb it? Get down. Get off it. Go back to hell and burn like the trash you are, you stupid, worthless, ugly sacks of animal shit. Just as he screams at the other sinners, the spider's thread, which until then had held up fine, suddenly breaks with a snap right where Kandata was hanging. Then all the sinners, Kandata among them, are once again doomed. Without even time to cry out, he goes falling through the air spinning like a top, and in the wink of an eye falls headfirst into the dark depths of hell. Afterwards, only the shortened spider's thread from heaven dangles there, glistening dimly in a sky void of both moon and stars. The Lord Buddha stands in heaven, having taken in everything from start to finish. When Kandata finally sinks like a rock to the bottom of the lowest reaches of hell, Buddha continues walking, his serene expression tinged with sadness. Having witnessed the entire scene, the Lord Buddha realized it was Kandata's compassionless heart that broke the string. Kandata had not only tried to escape by himself, but even tried to stop others from reaching salvation. For having such a cold, cruel heart, falling back into hell was just and fair punishment. The heavenly world was untouched by all this. Its beauty remained unaffected. Its stillness remained. The flowers, smelling so sweet and looking so pretty, start to open as noon draws near in heaven. Down below there is no sense of time, only sadness and pain, seemingly without end. The natural beauty of heaven, however, is not affected in the least about what has happened far below. The sweet-smelling flowers open to the pleasant sky. The weather is mild and calm. Noon draws near in heaven.